Rabies is a preventable viral disease most often transmitted through the bite of a rabid animal. The rabies virus infects the central nervous system of mammals, ultimately causing disease in the brain and death. The vast majority of rabies cases reported to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention each year occur in wild animals like bats, raccoons, skunks, and foxes. Mammals are warm-blooded animals with fur. While rabies is rare in people in the United States, with only one to three cases reported annually, about 60,000 Americans get post-exposure prophylaxis each year to prevent rabies infections after being bitten or scratched by an infected or suspected infected animal. In the United States, more than 90% of reported cases of rabies in animals occur in wildlife. Contact with infected bats is the leading cause of human rabies deaths in this country. At least 7 out of 10 Americans who die from rabies in the U.S. were infected by bats. People may not recognize a bat scratch or bite, which can be very small, but these types of contact can still spread rabies. Pets like cats and dogs and livestock like cattle and horses can also get rabies. Nearly all the pets and livestock that get rabies had not received vaccination or were not up to date on a rabies vaccination. Because of laws requiring dogs to be vaccinated for rabies in the United States, dogs make up only about 1% of rabid animals reported each year in this country. Unfortunately, you can't tell if an animal has rabies just by looking at it. The only way to know for sure if an animal has rabies is to perform laboratory testing. However, animals with rabies may act strangely. Some may be aggressive and try to bite you or other animals, or they may drool more than normal. This is where the term foaming at the mouth came from. But not all animals with rabies will be aggressive or drooling. Other animals may act timid or shy, move slowly or act tame, or they will let you get close to them. Because that's not the way wild animals usually act, you should remember that something could be wrong. Some animals may not appear ill. For the health and safety of the wildlife, your pets, and yourself, leave wild animals alone, including baby animals. The best thing to do is to never feed or approach a wild animal. Be careful of pets that you don't know. If you see a stray dog or cat, don't pet it. And if an animal is acting strangely, call your local animal control officer for help. All that being said, being outdoors where wildlife is isn't dangerous so long as you steer clear of the wildlife. After all, they are wild. Other things to look for when looking for rabies are general sickness, problems swallowing, an animal that bites at imaginary objects, sometimes called fly biting, an animal that's having trouble moving or may even be paralyzed, and a bat that is on the ground. There are several things you can do to protect your pet from rabies. These include making sure your pet gets regular rabies vaccines, keeping pets away from wild animals, spaying or neutering pets, and calling animal control to remove stray animals from your neighborhood. So then, what does the health department do about rabies? Well, our nursing team investigates reports of animal exposure. The nurses ask questions about who was in contact with the potentially rabid animal, how that contact was made, and then what the next steps might be. The University of Nebraska Veterinary Diagnostic Center tests specimens for rabies, then reports the results to the local health department and to Nebraska DHHS. On average, about 20 to 30 animals test positive for rabies each year. Through laboratory testing, result reporting, and investigation, public health has prevented cases of rabies in humans for decades. Brown bats are very active during this time. So please contact Two Rivers Public Health Department if you identify a bat in your home.